Toby, are you wondering how on earth that got away from you? Yeah, I am, yeah. Um, we've spoke, just spoken about it in there, really. That's, you know, this in theory is one of the easiest post match losses to talk about because you've had everything in the palm of your hand for such a long time. We, we, I thought we were great for a lot of the game coming away from home. You know, it's difficult here, first game in particular. You know, you're into everything. There's going to be the pre season rust, there's going to be all of it. It's, you know, you know, for a lot of it, we, we were far superior, but doesn't matter if you're far superior it's got to convert on the scoreboard so I think you know the usual parts of our game were good um, I think we should have transferred pressure onto the scoreboard in the session the second half we created a lot before Jack Walsh was outstanding um, and then ultimately we talked all week about discipline discipline and then the last you know the last knockings you know, effectively, we've had them on the canvas, let them get back up, and then they've come, you know, storming across and, and put us on the canvas in the last minute, so in the 15th round. So I just think that, yeah, trust, discipline at the end, um, and not converting the, converting the pressure we had. Yeah, to carry on the boxing analogy, I suppose you got caught with a sucker punch at the, in the final seconds of a, of a round. Yeah, if we're going to carry on with it, I just think we put a guard down. Really, we didn't get caught with a sucker punch because you know, at home they're going to chase the game, make points behind. They're going to come for you. Mm. So what happens is you just take and you sort of you start dancing around the down the ring, alley style, and then all of a sudden you get clocked on the chin, don't you? So and then all of a sudden, oh, hang on a minute, I need to recover. And in that time, they've gone bang, 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 back to back penalties, and you know that's what that's what happens. And as long as it's eight points, you know, you know they've always got that hope to cling on to, haven't they? What I mean, let's have a look at some positives. You mentioned Jack Walsh. Every time he stepped in at that first receiver, he seemed to create stuff. Yeah, no, for sure. I thought um, he's, you know, we play a multi-receiver type of game. Um, so, you know, we need the reliance on, on, on other people, or a few people doing a bit. Um, so I thought he stepped up well. One of the reasons that we, we picked him at fullback today, um, there was a tactical reason for that and he delivered on that. And obviously the fact that he can fit up at 10 and, and Dan just started to fatigue a little bit. Nagy's a good player, use your bench. I thought, um, yeah, I thought we got that right and we did a lot of good stuff around him for sure. Were you disappointed with the impact from the bench? Because probably up until about 60, 65 minutes, you pretty much had that game under wraps. With the changes, did you lose a bit of momentum? Yeah, for sure. And again, but they've also become more desperate. I mean, I'm, and I'm sure if the question you're asking me is should I have changed it, <laughs> um, we've got players that are out there that have come back from international duty that aren't ready. Adam Beard's done two training sessions. You know, so I appreciate the question and they're absolutely right and it looks like that, but on the face value, if you look at Dowie Lake, you look at Adam Beard, they're out on their feet. Yeah. You know, so from that point of view, I understand the question, but there's always context to everything and we basically played them for as long as we could. And uh, but you're right, the game changed when uh, you know, when those boys left the field, but they're international players, of course it's going to change. Uh, does this, in a way, make your next team talk when you meet up back at the... Does it make it easy? Because it's just, you, kind of, you know exactly what you've got to tell them. They've got to, they've got to put that to bed and use, it, use that pain to sort themselves out for next week. I've told them. I know now. I'm not a big work person for... Um, you know, post-match actually, while well, emotions are high, but this is one that's so easy and obvious. Mm. And to be fair, they knew, you know. And Jack spoke well. And all that matters is what you do next. You've heard me say it many times. So it's not about throwing the baby out of the bathwater. But you know, we'll be disappointed with that, without doubt. And we should be disappointed because we, we you know, we're aspiring to be a top eight team with top eight standards. And um, you know, at, at the killer moment, pressure got the better of us. It's just that. A ruthless edge, isn't it? That's what you need, that killer instinct. And that's what the best teams have. And you know, if you you can't just go, right, I'm gonna be I'm gonna have a ruthless edge, you've got to go through that pain, you've got to go through that. And you know, and and the bits people are focused on the last knockings and I understand that for sure. But ultimately the, the big pressure is, you know, the big questions, you know, were did did a lot of what we do look good, it did, so you know there's no need to panic, you know, we've got the stormers coming to town which is gonna be very, very tough as we know, um, so we're going to have to kick on and that's what these first few games are about. You've got to kick on, you've got to find out where your players are and I'm more interested in that and the energy to move forward rather than looking back because we've, we've, you know, we we've just got to lick our wounds, take it on the chin and move on. 
Do, do you think Crow would have got under the player's skin a little bit because you could see Dewey Lee having a bit of a bit of a banter from the crowd? You know, I suppose it's a derby, but, but you come in, you, when you come to Rodney Pride, that's exactly what you get. You know what you're going to get. So no, I don't think so. I think it, it wasn't a question of that. You know, some people you look at Matt Scott for example. This is his first pro- ever professional game. Yeah. You know, so he might think a little bit. Different. You know, the young players get used to it. I don't think. I think the best compliment I can give the, the Ospreys is. Then they didn't say much for 70 minutes, did they? Mm. So from that point of view, of course they're going to get behind the team, and, and I would expect that my supporters do exactly the same. I love coming here. I love the I love the gladiatorial element to it, you know, and they love waving goodbye to me as I go. So that's fine. I'm all good with that, and that's part of what sports all about. Whether we whether we dealt with pressure, I don't think it was necessarily that. Um, you know, for the majority of the game, I think we suffered a little bit from execution, but the last five minutes tells its own story. On a positive note, Ryan Combia, I thought played quite well. Mm. Obviously, he was released by the Scarlets, didn't have a club. What's your thoughts on him? I mean, he's he's been good. Well. No, he's been really good since he's come in. Obviously, he's got the bit between his teeth. You know, he's been given almost a second chance, I think, and he's definitely grabbed that. I think he scored some nice tries. You know, he, he's busy. He's learning how to do things the Ospreys way, while the Scarlets way, and he's been there a long time, so that's always difficult. Um, it's you know there's slight differences in that but he's having an impact in games and that's what you want your players to do